Good morning, St. Thomas's. In July 2018, Pulitzer Prize winning critic M Makiko Kakutani wrote an article that I believe uh, accurately summarizes the world in which we live. The uh, title of the article was The Death of Truth. There she outlines how there is no real cultural or uh, accepted cultural wide belief in a truth that is true for all. Instead, we live in a world of fake news, alternative facts, competing truths, theories of science, which at their best are only the opinions of experts. And the only truth is my truth, what I believe is true. And as the great songwriter John Prine wrote, I think he really summed it up when he said this in his song, Lonesome Friends of Science, when he, when he writes, the lonesome friends of science say, the world will end most any day. Well, if it does, then that's okay, because I don't live here anyway. I live down deep inside my head, where long ago I made my bed. Well, you don't need to be a John Prine or a Pulitzer Prize winner to know that this is an accurate description of the world in which we live. And the fruit of this uncertainty about truth is confusion, fear, doubt, worry. Suddenly, nothing is strong enough to put the full weight of your life into. And it's into this abyss of what is true, what is right, what is wrong, that um, our reading for today, Second John, comes. And it's actually very comforting news for us. Because in it, the Apostle John um, is writing to a church in the midst of the same sort of culture, the same sort of climate. Many people are claiming to have the truth about everything, and especially about who Jesus Christ is. But here we have the Apostle John speaking right into it. Listen to the first three verses. The elder, which is the way John describes himself, to the elect lady and her children, he's, he's talking to a specific church here and the members of that church, whom I love in truth. And not only I, but also all who know the truth because of the truth that abides in us and will be with us forever. Uh, grace, mercy, and peace will be with us from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father's Son, in truth and love. Well, in just those uh, three verses or four or, or uh, uh, yeah, three verses, we have four mentions of the word truth. And then as we walk into the body of our reading just for this um, Sunday. I'm only going to go up through verse um, 6. Here we have Paul writing, I rejoice, or, or, or uh, John writing, I rejoice greatly to find some of your children walking in the truth, just as we were commanded by the Father. Well, clearly what John wants us to know is that he, in the midst of this chaos of what is true and what is not true, he is coming to bring truth. And in these uh, short uh, verses, I think that we can find three quick nuggets, three uh, simple points that John wants us to, to know here. One, that there is truth. Two, that this truth is Jesus. And then three, that we are called to walk in that truth. So the first comforting, simple point, there is truth. In the midst of competing truth claims, competing worldviews, com competing understandings, not just of who uh, God is, but who are we as people? Do we, are we born with an, with an identity or do we get to choose it? Regardless, with all these different competing uh, truth claims, is there one that's actually true? And John, throughout his gospel, which, of course, he's building on in these letters, is saying, yes, there is a truth, a true truth, a truth which is not spin, a truth which is not self-interested, a truth which is true because it's, well, true. 
And that brings us to what the substance of this truth is, point two. What is this truth? Jesus Christ himself. You see, it's easy, especially for those of us in the Western culture, uh, this intellectual culture in which we live, uh, to make Christianity a set of ideas or a philosophy or a way of life. When in actuality, our truth is a person. His words, his life, his deeds. And of course, John is quick to make this point once again, not just in this letter, but in his gospel, where he records Jesus telling multiple times uh, that he is the way and the truth and the life. That he is literally God's word in human flesh walking around. His words are God's words. His actions are God's actions. He is truth. And then, of course, that brings us to our third so, uh, simple point. It's not enough just to know this truth. One that's really encountered the truth of who Jesus is walks in it. We hear Jesus say that. Or, or we hear John say that. I rejoice greatly to find some of your children walking in the truth. Now, that just doesn't just mean intellectually assenting to what's true, but actually living out the implications of the truth of Jesus Christ in our lives. Well, of course, there are many ways that we can do that, but John, I think, gives us the heart of what it means to walk in this truth of Jesus. He says, and now I ask you, dear lady, once again, talking to the church, not as though I were writing to you a new commandment, but the one we have had from the beginning, that we love one another. This is the heart, the, the center of what the truth about Jesus Christ is, is that because we sinners, Jesus came to us and loved us even unto death, that the fruit of that, we're to walk every day loving one another as Jesus Christ has loved us. But for us fallen sinners, we need guidance in what this truth of love looks like. And of course, John gives it when he uh, writes, and this is love, that we walk or live according to the commandments. And this is the commandment, just as you have heard from the beginning, so that you should walk in it. John's kind of a poet who so repeats himself to, uh, to uh, give great emphasis to this fact of walking in it. But of course, what love is, is not just how we define it, but how God de defines love, not just in the Ten Commandments, in the life of Jesus, but of course, the whole of the Scriptures. And of course, we have the perfect picture of walking in love with our Savior on the cross. As I'm practicing for um, outdoor sermons, I want to keep this one relatively short. So I'm going to end it with this story. Maybe it's a story that some of you have heard. Uh, maybe it's a story that none of you have, have heard. Uh, but it's the story, or it's the legend, rather, of St. Christopher, an ancient Christian medieval saint who we don't know if he lived or not, but there's certainly a legend about his life. Whether he lived or not is really irrelevant because I think the story outlines exactly what it means to seek the truth, find the truth in Jesus, and then walk in that truth by loving your neighbor as yourself. Well, as as the story goes, there was a one there was once a young man named Offerus, and Offerus was a very talented but, but a very strong young man, and he sought to use this God-given talent of strength to serve the greatest truth, the greatest king in the world. And so he went from local lord to local lord, serving him. And then when he heard that there was a greater king, a king of a, of a kingdom that all their lords followed, then he served that king. But one night when hearing about uh, 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 the, this, this great king named Satan, that even his own king shuddered in fear upon hearing his, his name, offers decided that he would dedicate his life to serving this king, Satan. And though he did many evil deeds in his service, he felt like that this was the truth. Until one day, they came upon a roadside crucifix. And of course, a crucifix is simply a cross with a picture of Jesus on it. 
crucified. And at the sight of that, Satan and his men turned away. And so Ophorus now said, this must be a greater truth for even the great Satan is terrified of it. So seeking to serve this, this great truth, he found a monk and the monk, um, and, and, and when Ophorus asked the monk how he could serve this great King Jesus, this great truth, he said, set up a, a cabin or a cottage by the stream and help visitors cross. And so Ophorus, through calm weather and through great storms, would put people on his shoulders, carry them in his arms, and carry them across the stream, loving his neighbor day in and day out. And that is what it means to know the truth, the real truth, the truth of Jesus, the one who laid down his life, and then also to walk in that love and truth every day, loving our neighbors as ourselves, as Christ loved us. And this is good news for us sinners indeed. Amen.